Hey, what do we say, guys? The hack here. Uh, just doing a little bit of a recap on a commission that I started um, at the time of recording. So I'm not exactly sure how much of this will have actually hit um, the, the internet and how much I would have posted about exactly what. I know that's a very odd sentence, but I kind of um, did a little bit of a, uh, a journal as I as I did these things, and I don't think they came out very well, at least not in the journal. So I'm probably not going to post a lot of that stuff. So in my mind, I'm repeating a lot of things that I'm getting ready to say here, but you know, as you're listening to it, you probably have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. So this is a commission that I did uh, for some some Proxagors, mm -hmm. and if you don't know, these things are fine cast. Um, and I don't like the term fine cast. It should probably be uh, finely miscast. Uh, the first set that I got actually had a duplicate body in it. Um, and because I had a duplicate body, each body comes on a separate sprue, but the head and arms uh, come on a different sprue. The head, at least the arms, are uh, specific to a type of body, so I didn't have the right configuration. So the client basically said, well, just go out and get another set. You know, I'll, I'll pay for five instead of, instead of three. We did that, and I actually started off by doing a practice run on here. This was a practice run that I did. Um, to kind of get the colors right. Now, how, how do I do the colors? So again, this is commission. And yes, guys, I do do commissions. And if you haven't seen my website yet, you could, you could check me out at uh, paintinghack.weebly.com. I do have a website out there. It's got my full portfolio out there, so you can see everything I've done. And, you know, like I said before, I'm not really in this to make money, so to speak. I'm a, I do it because I like it. So um, I think my prices are probably lower than most. Anyway, um, so this is what I did for him. I got a movement tray here and I kind of did the um, color scheme on each one. This one's a little hard to see, but this is a blue to dark blue, purple to a dark purple, and green to green. The reds and blues and oranges here represent the scales. So he went with the purple and, and, and blue. <laughs> Excuse me. So that's exactly what we have here. Here's the trial run that I did to get the um, uh, the highlights right to see how it turned out. Which one do I do first? I do the scales first or the skin first. So actually having this spare piece actually turned out to be kind of a uh, a good thing. So what are these guys all about? So again, fine cast, not the worst fine cast out there, but it's still fine cast. So you have to be kind of uh, a little bit wary of that. Um, and here's one. And if I point them up towards you, you can see the shading. Okay. I'm going to go over each piece here, uh, or each part of the Croxagores, um, from kind of top to bottom, and kind of give a play-by-play a -play of, of, of what's going on, okay? So, um, again, they were all based in, in gray, and then using the color scheme that the client chose, which was blue and purple, I started doing basically a base coat of a purple. Now, they were all base coated with the exact same color uh, purple, which was the, ooh, what's it called here? It is something purple by P3, beaten purple. There we go. Beaten purple by P3. So that's right there, that's the base. Um, and they're all based that way, and they're highlighted with a mix of beaten purple and, and white. And that's how I got the highlights in here. However, on some of my transition just a little bit, and it's maybe hard to see here on the camera, um, but say this guy and this guy here, as you probably could see, are different shades. Hopefully you can see that, different shades of purple. And I did that in two different ways. Uh, when I did the white, in some of them I mixed a little bit of the fang, which is kind of like a blue, kind of a, a, a grayish blue color. And uh, that gave it a, a, a little bit of a different tint. Then I made a wash out of the Vallejo Game Color uh, Wash series, and they have a blue shade. It's a shade wash, whatever you want to call it here. Okay, and then I mixed it with uh, either uh, black. Well, they actually they all had a little bit of black in it, but I put a little bit of red in two of them. And basically, what that does, and again, it's a little hard to see here. And some of them were very blue, some were a little on the red side. See, these two guys right here are relatively the same shade. This one's a little more blue than the other one. But you can see here that this guy's a heck of a lot more red. Hopefully you can see that. 
maybe not. Depends on the, the lighting, how well it comes through. Maybe on his arm, you can kind of see. What that does is it adds a little bit of variation to every single one of them. So you don't have a lot to work with. You have, I have three different body poses, and I have different, you know, weapon heads and whatnot. But the body pose dictates the, the stance and, the, and how he's holding the other weapon. It, yes, the tails are different, but it's not very much of an eye-catching feature of the tails. The heads are, but they add a little bit of character to it. So color, along with all those other variables, made each one of them look uh, relatively different. And then we move on to the scales. Now, the scales were done in the exact same way. They were all base coated in the same color, which um, hopefully you could see the, the span of the different colors that, that go across. Um, anyway, the colors were Exile Blue from P3, um, and that set down the base color. Some of them are dry brush with a different colors than the other. Some are dry brush with a little cool black mixed into white, which are these kind of dimmer colors here. And some of them have Caldor Sky, I think is how you pronounce it, from uh, Sin Citadel. So those gave the different tones on the color. So now I have different color skins and different color scales. And then I washed it uh, kind of the same way with the game color black wash, but then I added a little bit of this Minotaur ghost tint into it, guys. This is a really good stuff to use when you want to use a shade or a tint. It's, uh, I think, superior when it comes to actually shading stuff uh, than the other things are meant for a glaze out there um, or to shade. And again, a shade wash, I mean, it gets, so if you want to change the color of something, the ghost tint's real good. You can use it as a wash and it tints everything, which I believe is a glaze is a proper term for that, all right? So <clears throat> that gave me a pretty good uh, variation in, and they're all similar, obviously. When you look at them, they look pretty similar. But, you know, again, I'm not sure if the, if the uh, camera's picking up the colors very well. But, uh, yeah, they're definitely, each one looks unique in color as well, okay? So then we move on to the weapons themselves, okay? So the weapons were all done with a uh, khaki, hammerfall khaki. And then I just basically faded it up to white to, to catch the light source. Um, I think all the shafts are Rhinox high with XB88 as a highlight. Uh, but what I did on, on the different colors is every single uh, weapon here is just based in pig iron, which is your dark uh, bulk gun metal type color, I think is the Citadel equivalent. And then what I did is I dry brushed each one in one of a few different uh gold colors. One was Brass Balls by P3, one was Molten Bronze by P3, Balthazar Gold, Solid Gold, and there's another one in there. I'm not much exactly sure which one that is. I think it was the bronze color from um, from Citadel. Anyway, what it does is it gives this really nice effect of kind of, you kind of look at it, it's like, is that gold or is that metal or is what is that? Kind of, it's, it's very, very catching to the eye. And again, it's probably a little difficult to see because of the light, and I just don't have a real good um, kind of studio set up here. And if I try and pull the light away, maybe it makes a little more sense. But again, this stupid white right light camera doesn't like to pick up anything. If it's too dark, you can't see it. If it's too light, you can't see it. Anyway, um, neat, neat trick. Um, and it makes, again, each one look uh, likewise individual. So then moving on, um, they have these uh, bracelets or collars or whatever around their necks and tails. And I did that uh, basically with a different color gold and then red and, a, and a, like an orange color here and there speckled throughout it. Um, and then for all the jewelry that each one of these guys has on here, I did a different color. Come on, you stupid thing. Uh, a different color of... Uh, of gold so that one any one given model here has uh, three or four colors of gold on it something like that and I think that turned out real nice as well and then lastly I just went in and again you do whatever little bits and pieces are on there like the, the skulls are they're hanging off like this guy and then every single one of the um, this is actually kind of difficult to really get something that looked right because you want something to be stark. But again, I don't do a lot of cartoony stuff. Mine, I like to make it look a, a little bit more realistic. So getting this to look un-GW-ish, if you will, where it's just, you know, it's a base color with a, with a bright highlight, extreme highlight on it, which I, I didn't want to go for. It was a little difficult. So what I did is I actually painted every single one of these uh, khaki, hammerfall khaki. And I came back around and I, I, uh, I 
kind of a very thin coat of Menoth white highlight. And then I did a sepia wash, a really heavy sepia wash, and just got it just on the bone color. And then came back in again and highlighted again with Menoth, or I think it was an off-white and then a pure white uh, to catch it and try to shade some of the stuff as best as I could. It's kind of difficult because, again, fine cast, and a lot of irregular angles and edges on there. Very difficult to actually get right. Um, anyway. So that kind of covers the actual model itself, and I'm a true believer in that, as you probably see here, that a model really doesn't pick up all the umph unless it has a good base on it, too. So I went in here, here and did a little bit of a special job here with the, with the base. Now, I started off by doing a, this is a very rough model uh, that I did, and this was kind of done the same way that most people do bases, where you have the aggregate or the... Um, the ballast down here and then you got some cork board and I try to kind of cut some designs in the cork board and boy did that turn out horribly it just didn't look right at all so then based off of a another guy on, on YouTube that I saw did something I did the second model and you can see here it's, it looks a hell of a lot better um, this stuff right here guys is play-doh that's right the good old play-doh like you use when you're a kid so I found myself not a child anymore playing with play-doh on my desk you can kind of see the residue here so what I did is I rolled it out real, real thin, okay, um, to make all this stuff here. I rolled it out real, real thin, and each one of these has a piece of it, and I made a disc, which was right over here, and then I actually did the designs, and then I did the designs just by, you know, whatever I could find to make the impressions, and I built a whole entire a mosaic, and you can kind of see part of it here. There we go. So there's part of there. So I built an entire mosaic, you know, with the, all the way around the side, with the bricks in the middle and then kind of a, a uh, gold brick on the outside. Just none of this was painted yet. And then um, just kind of a, a boundary to kind of show large slabs of rock like on this one here. And then once it dried, it takes about 24 hours to dry. Um, then I broke it apart. I simply just kind of took it like a wafer and I snapped it, right? And then I glued it into place and then I used to put PV, uh, PVA glue or white glue down the whole entire base, put the piece of... Uh, sculpt that I had done on top of that and then put ballast down and then just started basically you know base coat the whole thing black come back in with a with the gray do the dry brushing on the gray then do the the ballast uh, dry brushing so on and so forth and kind of built it up until you know I, I have this effect so it's really kind of two effects here I have one with the mosaic anything with the, the strong mosaic uh, there's only two pieces here that really have a lot of the mosaic that I did on it you can kind of see it there um, and then the other pieces don't. The other pieces that don't, to give it a little more life, I did these little bricks, supposed to be like falling down rocks or something, here and here. Um, and then I added some moss just for a color pop on all of them. This is the Armored Painter Jungle, something or another. And I'm not sure if I'm real happy with it, to tell you the truth. There it is, that stuff. Uh, jungle Undergrowth. Because, uh, by the way, this stuff stinks so bad inside this box, but... Uh, it's real soft and supple inside the box. You see there's different colors, and you kind of ha kind of have to play with it and stuff. Um, as you can probably see right here, and I'm not sure how to overcome this, but it gets very brittle and hard once it's been out in the uh, air for about an hour or two, and it's no longer soft. And I thought I put it down to be soft, but this right here becomes very, very, that's very brittle right there, and it's, you know, it's going to wear down over time, I'm sure. Uh, the good thing about it, though, is it peels right off. The whole thing will chip right off, and it'll, you can be done with it. So if it does start to kind of deteriorate beyond the point of saving, then then that's really it. Um, you just pull it off. You put a new piece down. You put static grass down there if you want. It won't, won't hurt the model whatsoever. So again, uh, that is the commission. Oh, yes, I did a little Play-Doh snakes on a few of these here to give it even more pop. There's one here, and there's one right there. Uh, Again, you know, grown grown person playing with Play-Doh, but hey, I paint toys anyhow. So, um, and then all this was uh, uh, Tester's dull coat, and then I went back and went to oil wash to hit things like that to really give it a good contrast. Something only, only really an oil wash could do, and boy, that's not there we go. Something only an oil wash could do, guys. If you're not using oil washes uh, to do uh, dark on light. Um, recesses like that, like off of uh, if you're doing any kind of light color model that you come in and you want to, you know, really make the recesses pop, you need to do an oil wash. You just 
an investment you have to make. It's a little bit of mineral spirits. You know, it's probably about a $15 investment for the mineral spirits and at least a black, black and a brown uh, oil color. Uh, but you get some results. You really just can't do any other way. The only other way to do results like that is once you're 100% done, get a tiny little brush, uh, get some watery black paint, and try and get it in there without getting, uh, you know, without making a mistake. Uh, oil washes are extraordinarily forgiving because it's done after the uh, the varnish. You just go in there and you just get a, a, a Q-tip and just wipe off the excess, whatever you kind of messed up on. It disappears and you're only left with, you know, the recess being filled. Anyway, there they are, the uh, the Croxy Gores. Um, I did uh, say that I, I would not uh, disclose, you know, obviously the client doesn't want his name blabbed up all over the the interweb and stuff. And, you know, I'm not going to say exactly how much that he, he, he paid for these, uh, but, you know, um, yeah, commission's a commission, so you know I'll, I'll keep that 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 privacy there. And if he wants to share it, he can. That's up to him. But um, again, I, I I do do some of this, so you can check me out on my on my website. Um, there's a little form you can fill out if you're interested, you know, and you just want to say, well, how much would it be about to do you know X, Y, and Z or whatever it is. The other thing is on the website again. That's paintinghack.weebly.com. You can find a portfolio of all the stuff that I've done I've done out there. So you guys check it out. And it's got links to my YouTube channel, which you're probably watching right now. All right. All right, guys. So I appreciate it. Um, and I appreciate the the gentleman who commissioned me to do this because these actually were a, a good learning experience for me. Uh, a lot of fun to get them done. I really like the, the end state. I, I think they really uh, turned out really well. And I definitely learned quite a few things along the way. Um, you see these guys here in the background. Ooh, yeah, these would be my next job, I think, right here. Again, I've only done 140k model, but <clears throat> I guess those are probably going to be the, the next 40k that I try. All right, guys, so you guys take care.